All right, guys, now uh, today's video is going to be talking about comms on old machines, basically hooking up some of my retro systems and uh, getting them online. Now, this has become something I've actually become quite interested in um, in the last six months or so. It was after reading a book that I think I spoke about on a video I did late last year. Uh, the the ebook is actually called um, Commodore Sordid Tales of a Commodore Junkie. And it only cost me about three or four quid. It wasn't very much at all. And uh, this book, if you haven't read it, I'll put a link to it in the video description if you want to get hold of it. Um, definitely recommend you read it. It's all about this kid that grew up in uh, early 80s America, really got into the Commodore 64 scene in a big way, you know, wares and trading and all that kind of thing. Then discovered the uh, early BBS scene and uh, basically went through, you know, the uh, the big the BBS scene in his local area, then nationally achieved a bit of fame on it and set up his own boards and things like that. And really the way the author talks about it, it sounds quite romantic. And uh, I was reading this ebook thinking, it is quite a shame that I did miss out on that era. Because really by the time I was old enough to, you know, really get into online in a big way, um, we're talking about, you know, it was about 95, 96, so the World Wide Web had taken over by then. Although we did experience bulletin boards, I mean, I used to read about them in magazines and, you know, I did call a few up and we used to dick around with them at school and that kind of thing. But really, you know, I was like, you know, eight, nine, ten years old then, I wasn't really old enough to really get into it in a big way. Um, so I've been reading about it and I thought, you know, I would really like to experience the BBS scene properly. So uh, this video is going to be talking about how you can connect a Commodore Amiga computer specifically um, up to a BBS. Now you might be thinking, didn't you do a video about getting the Amiga online like, you know, a year ago? I did actually. I did a video about the uh, Amiga 1200 and uh, hooking up an Ethernet um, network interface card and then using TCP IP to uh, get onto the World Wide Web and, uh, you know, IRC and that kind of thing. This video is going to be completely different though, as doing that actually requires, you know, an expanded Amiga. Um, this method will actually work on uh, any Amiga. It will even work on a, you know, Amiga 500 with Workbench 1.3 and a megabyte of RAM. Now all you're going to need for it is, you're going to need a couple of things. We'll start, you're going to need, and I'm sorry some people will be like, oh really? You're going to need access to a Windows machine. Um, this is a little Acer NetTop machine that I've got running Windows XP. Uh, so that's the first thing. I mean, I'm sure there are methods of doing this on um, OS X and Linux. Um, however, for this method that I'm going to be talking about, the software that I'm going to be covering uh, is Windows. As you know, I figured everyone has got access to a Windows box if they want one. Now you're also going to need, uh, let's get this off there quickly, you're going to need a null modem cable. Now what this basically does, pick it up off the floor, is uh, connect an Amiga serial port to a PC serial port. Now what you're going to need is, you're going to need, I think it's a 9 pin on this end, and um, that's going to need to be a female connector. On the other end, we've got a 25 pin uh, connector for the Amiga serial port. That is also going to need to be a female connector as well. Now, I couldn't find any that had a female connector for the uh, DB25, so what I did is I went out and got a little um, cheap gender changer. So this actually works fine. So you're going to need that. You're going to need a, a 9 pin to 25 pin null modem cable. That's the first thing. And then also you're going to need access to a PC that's um, got a uh, serial port on it, which you might be thinking, uh, you know, my modern machine hasn't had a serial port on for like 10 years. So the solution to that is getting hold of one of these, a USB to serial adapter. Now this bit actually was quite problematic for me as um, I tried all these before I could get one that worked properly. Now these two here were 10 pounds from Maplin. And I presume these would be quite high quality. However, I bought the first one um, thinking that I actually broke it and went out and bought a second one. It's actually the same, so both these will be going back to the shop. I also got this black one here off eBay. That cost me two pounds. And uh, it came with a little mini CD included with it as well. And uh, the CD that it came with is actually for a scanner, not this at all. After much searching, I managed to find some drivers for it and it gets connected briefly and keeps dropping the connection every like two minutes. So it's a pile of shit. Uh, the one that did actually work for me in the end is uh, this one here, which is also off eBay. Um, wasn't that much actually, I think it was about, it was about eight, nine pounds. It says 340 on it. Now this is actually, I think it's a type of chipset that's in there. I'll put a link to this uh, specific um, USB to serial adapter in my video description. So if you want to get the same one, I do know this one actually works all right for me. As uh, it did take me quite a while to find a working solution. A couple of the cables only worked one way, another one wouldn't be recognized at all. It was a bit of a headache. You'll also obviously need an Amiga, and you'll need a method of uh, getting the communication software onto your Amiga. So uh, 
For this video, I'm going to be using a good old fashioned floppy disk, even though, you know, obviously if you've got a hard disk and all that, it'd probably be a bit easier. Now, uh, I've spoken about how to transfer software to the Amiga in an older video. I'll pop the link um, in the video description below. You are basically going to either need um, cross DOS on your Amiga to read PC floppy disks and uh, that kind of thing. Or if you've got this non modem cable, you can use like Twin Express, but again, you're going to need to get the software onto your Amiga. Now, if you are really, really stuck, and I'm talking, you know, you've got no way of getting anything onto your Amiga, you know, there's no method you can do of getting software onto it. Um, I don't want to get inundated here. But um, if you cover the cost of postage and a floppy disk, maybe I can help you out, providing you don't live like, you know, the other side of the world. So anyway, we'll crack on. What we're going to do is I'm going to talk you through setting this up and the software needed to connect your Amiga to a bulletin board um, via a PC serial port. So let's have a look. Right then, for this video, we're going to be using my trusty Amiga 1200, even though this is not actually the machine that I um, got this set up for because I want to get my... 1.3 based Amiga CD TV that's in my living room onto BBS's. Um, however, because I've actually got this hooked up to its own monitor and uh, there's already an old PC here on a separate screen, it's going to make doing this um, demonstration of this method a lot easier. So it works the same in any machine. So we'll use a 1200 for now. So I've got the null modem cable into the Amiga serial port. Now underneath the table, I've actually got an LP4 uh, based Windows XP PC. And as you can see, I've got the uh, the serial to USB adapter plugged into its um, USB port on the back and uh, the other end of the serial cable that goes into the Amiga in there. Even though this PC actually has got a, a serial port on it, but you know, I thought to demonstrate this method we'd go down the USB route. So uh, this machine runs uh, Windows XP, uh, however, it'll be the same on um, Vista 7 or Windows 8 as well. Now first of all, we're going to grab a little bit of software that's called Internet Modem and it's from a company called Boycott Software. Now this is actually, from what I've seen online, this is not really all that popular. It seems to be quite a, uh, you know, not very well known bit of software. And at the website, as you can see, it goes to an IP address. However, what I'll do is I'll put a link to the um, the uh, the website in the video description. Uh, then we need to download something called uh, Internet Modem off their website. There it is at the top there, Internet Modem. Uh, download this program. Then there's a little bit of setting up to do. Before you run it, you want to make sure that your um, USB to serial adapter is configured as well. So uh, install the drivers that come with whichever card you've got. Then you want to go to the device manager on Windows to make sure that you can see it and that it's been allocated a, uh, a COM device number. So go into device manager. <coughs> then we can see here, um, ports, COM and LPT, we're going there. And there is mine, a USB to serial. It's got a CH340 chipset in mine, so uh, I know this one works. And it's been assigned COM3 as uh, this machine already has a COM port built in anyway. So what we'll do is we've downloaded that internet modem, we'll open it up. What it actually is, internet modem, is a Hayes modem emulator. So any machine that connects to this is going to basically think that it's connected to a modem. And uh, we can do Telnet via this program. So it's very cool actually, um, and quite a nice method of doing it. It does take um, a little bit of configuration first though, it's quite simple. All you do is open this in a text editor. Uh, you'll see here it'll ask you for your serial port number. Now my USB to serial is on COM3, so that'll be um, serial port 3 that's already set up. Then you'll need to set a board rate as well. Um, now I'm using 9600 on mine just because, you know, the Amiga serial port isn't all that quick, and really 9600 is, you know, quick enough for doing BBS really. And I've often found the the kind of slower you set it, the more reliable the connection can be. So we'll start on 9600. I mean, you can try, you know, feel free to experiment and try a bit harder if you want. I didn't have to change any of the rest of it. The rest of it all worked as is. But you'll basically want to make sure that the settings in your Amiga um, terminal client are the same as in here. So what we'll do then is uh, you'll just need to get the the client for your Amiga as well. There's one on the uh, on Aminet called Ncom, and there's actually a free public key to uh, have the fully unlocked version too. So that's worth a download. The one I'm going to be using, um, just preference, it's going to be called JRcom. So we'll launch Internet Modem. And as you can see here, it tells me that it's um, open COM3. The board rate's correct, 9600, um, and the handshaking and all that set up. So what we'll do now, we'll go over to the Amiga. I've got JRCOM installed on this floppy disk here. Now this machine's got a hard disk in it, so I could use that method, but obviously I want this to run on my Amiga CD TV that's only got a floppy drive. So let's pop that in there. We'll turn the Amiga on, and it should load from the floppy disk. Now obviously, 
the stumbling block that a lot of people may have, as I mentioned before, is actually getting the uh, software onto your Amiga yourself. Uh, I've done a video about transferring software before, but basically if you've got an Amiga 1200 or a 600, really easy method is using one of these, a uh, PCM CIA to compact flash card. So you can plug that into the port on the side of the Amiga um, and then literally, you know, put that into a card reader on, the, on a PC or a Mac and just transfer the software onto your Amiga that way. It literally just goes in the... Uh, the port on the side of the Amiga there. So there we go, my terminal program's now loaded up. And as you can see on the screen, it says, carrier signal is detected, that's a good sign. Um, as it basically means it's, you know, found the modem. Let's pop the lights off quickly so you can see the screen a bit better. Sorry if you're getting any uh, CRT flicker on this. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll use the Amiga and we'll try loading a bulletin board up. So you can see all my settings are the same as a PC, 9600 we got there. You can configure all these from the uh, the menu up here as well. You just want to make sure the board rate and the handshaking and all that is, is the same. So we'll go into my directory here. Now the good thing is you might be thinking, well these are all phone numbers. How does, how does phone numbers work these days? Well actually if you type in just a telnet address now, um, the internet modem software on my PC will uh, basically grab that as if the Amiga is calling a phone number, so it won't see it as any different. So we've got in here bbs.at2k.org, so we'll try dialing that. Occasionally you get a little error like here, I've got 4DT, it's often worth just giving it another go if you get that. Um, let's try it again, I bet it works. There we go. Give it a moment, and it should connect to it. There we are, we're in now. Uh, press escape twice. That's going to um, have a little look at what kind of client I'm using. Checking if I've got ANSI graphics, which I have. Um, I will try using the uh, the flashy menu, number one. And there we go, those lovely old school ANSI graphics that we've got there as well. Um, <laughs> that were all the rage back in the BBS days. So this um, this BBS is actually pretty good, actually. It lets you go on to uh, Telnet, and um, IRC, rather. So we're logging as a guest for now. Um, then you know usually you get offered all the uh, you know the latest messages that you can see, and this is how uh, you know we were online before the World Wide Web took over. It was all text-based um, with these basic ANSI graphics. We'll do uh, we don't read the messages, and we've got the uh, the main menu here. So what should we do? We've got the file area there where you can download and upload things. Um, I think a specific Amiga BBS would be better for that. We'll try going into a chat room though. We can actually get an IRC via a lot of BBSs. So. Um, switch to IRC mode, hash I. Oh, I think I pressed the wrong one there, let's try that again. Actually, we'll come out of that. Let me try that again. I think I pressed the wrong thing, right? We'll try that again. I. There we are. Now it gives me a list of IRC clients that this Telnet server connects to. So we'll try um, irc.twit.tv, um, which is a channel that I go on regularly anyway. Um, it's Leo Laporte's Twit Network, the IRC channel for that. We'll ignore all those options. And there we are, we're connected to an IRC server via a uh, Telnet BBS through the Amiga um, via a PC. Um, now we need to join the channel, so we'll do join. Um, which channel we want to go on Twit Live, it says there. And that should. There we go, we'll enter that channel now. That shows me a list of all the users, the ops, the voice to users. Um, after that, we should be able to chat. And we can see some IRC activity down the bottom there. Someone's just entered the channel. Um, although the time I've connected, it's half past three on a Sunday afternoon, <laughs> which would be like about what, like, seven eight in the morning in america so uh, the channel's a bit quiet at the moment being a, a mainly american channel but you know i could type hi um it might not have been the best time to demo this but there you go i mean we're connected to irc as you can see we're getting some channel activity there someone signed off um someone else has joined and were i to come on a bit later on in the day i'm sure this would be a uh, you know hive of activity so uh, there you go that's a little example on uh using bulletin boards via the uh the normal modem method into a PC. So this um, internet modem software, definitely recommend it. It's been the easiest method that I've found to do it. And there is a website that's worth looking at um, called the Telnet BBS Guide, the BBS Corner, um, which is telnetbbsguide.com. And uh, you can actually click into, they're arranged alphabetically, and these are updated 
every month they do these, so they always check that the latest boards are working. So there's loads and loads of Telnet sites that you can go on. Uh, shows you where in the world they're based as well. So, you know, a lot of these are kind of... Um, there's a lot of MUD games, multi-user dungeon games you can play online and all sorts you can do, really, if you want to kind of relive the internet before the, uh, you know, the, the World Wide Web took over. Definitely a good little method. And uh, just to quickly show you what it works like on uh, a 1.3 Amiga 500 slash CDTV... I'll take you in my living room and uh, show you how it works in there. Right, so here we are, my Amiga CDTV in my living room, complete with the uh, custom black CDTV Commodore keyboard as well. I thought I'd show it just on this uh, setup here because I know it's a bit like hardware porn to some of you Amiga guys. All right, so I've got this uh, little mini Acer PC here um, that's actually set to launch internet modem on startup automatically. That means, because I, mean, I don't really use this machine for much else really, uh, so it does mean that I can uh, basically just um, have it set up without a mouse or a keyboard. It doesn't need to be on a display or anything as well. Um, and I can use it just as a dedicated um, pseudo modem for the uh, CDTV. Right, so we'll pop the disc in that I used on my Amiga 1200. And we should be able to uh, launch JRCOM on the CDTV as well. And we get that old school uh, blue, white and orange Workbench 1.3 scheme there. I was actually reading some uh, Amiga folklore that the reason they came up with that colour scheme originally was because um, they wanted it to show all right on the cheapest, crappiest NTSC tube TV that you could find back in the day. And they found that the uh, the blue colour scheme kind of was the only one that showed really well on that. So there you are, a little bit of uh, an Amiga urban legend. Hope it's true. Uh, right now you can see we've got the uh, JRCOM program launched and we see, as we can see there the uh, carrier has been detected. So I've got a mouse connected here. If we just go up to the menu, we should be able to connect to the same Telnet BBS that I showed you on my Amiga 1200. So there we go. We'll click on dial. Um, yeah, we've got the correct code there. So this should connect now automatically, hopefully. And there we are. The, uh, the BBS is connected. So uh, that does mean that I can now go on BBSs via my uh, old school Amiga CDTV. And think about the CDTV, I mean, uh, I've done a video on this before. It's basically an Amiga 500, you know, it's got um, Kickstart 1.3, 1 megabyte of RAM, um, a 68K processor, so anything that works on here, uh, it will work the same on an Amiga 500. So there you go, thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you want to find out more, all the links will be in the video description, along with my Twitter, my blog, my Facebook group, all of that. Please join us on there if you can. And I'll see you in the next video.